You've stood in the baking aisle staring at white sugar, brown sugar, raw sugar, turbinado, demerara, all at wildly different prices, and thought, aren't these all just sugar? Some bags cost three times more. Marketing screams raw and natural and unrefined. One looks like wet sand, another like perfect snow. You've wondered if expensive brown sugar is actually healthier, or if you're just paying for prettier packaging. That white crystal in your coffee started as 10-foot tall grass, or a massive beetroot. The journey from plant to crystal involves crushing, boiling, spinning at industrial scale, like a concrete factory for sweetness. So, how does a tropical plant become those perfect white crystals? Why does brown sugar cost more when it's supposedly less processed? And is there actually any difference worth paying for? Let's explore the process. Sugar comes from two plants, sugar cane and sugar beets. Most people have never seen either one growing. Sugar cane looks like bamboo, 10 to 15 feet tall, thick stalks full of sweet juice, grows in tropical climates, Brazil, India, Thailand. You've seen it in movies without realizing that's where table sugar comes from. Sugar beets look like giant white carrots growing underground. Europe, North America, Russia, about 20% of world sugar comes from beets, 80% from cane. You've eaten both without knowing which, chemically identical by the time they reach your kitchen. Here's what's happening. Both plants store energy as sucrose. Sugarcane in stalks above ground, beets in roots below. Humans extract that energy and crystallize it. Extraction starts brutal. Sugarcane stalks get fed through massive rollers that crush them flat. Three or four passes, each squeezing out more liquid. What comes out is cloudy brown juice that smells sweet, but looks nothing like sugar yet. Sugar beets get sliced thin, soaked in hot water to dissolve sugar out. Same goal, different method. That brown juice is only 15% sugar. The rest is water, plant fibers, minerals. Making it into white crystals requires removing everything that isn't sucrose. First, heating. Juice gets boiled to evaporate water. Lime gets added to neutralize acids and make impurities clump together. These clumps settle or float where they can be skimmed off. Now here's where it gets interesting. Clarified juice goes into vacuum evaporators, massive chambers where juice boils at lower temperature because pressure is reduced. Why? High heat would caramelize sugar and turn it brown. Vacuum boiling keeps it clear while concentrating from 15 to 65% sugar. At this point, you have thick brown syrup. Crystallization requires precise control. Syrup goes into huge pans boiled while stirred constantly. Tiny seed crystals get added and dissolve sugar molecules attached to them, growing larger. This is where brown and white sugar split paths and where most people get confused about what raw and refined mean. When crystals form in brown syrup, they're coated in molasses, dark liquid left after crystallization. Those crystals get spun in centrifuges, salad spinners the size of cars. Spinning forces molasses outward through holes, leaving crystals behind. First spin produces brown crystals coated in molasses. This is raw sugar. Second spin removes more molasses. Third spin makes crystals almost white. But truly, white sugar requires one more step, washing through activated carbon that absorbs remaining color. This is what refined means, not chemically altered, just washed more thoroughly. You probably thought brown sugar was healthier because it looks less processed. It is less processed by one washing step. Nutritional difference? Negligible. 
Brown sugar has tiny amounts of minerals. White sugar is 99.9% .9 pure sucrose. Brown is 97%. Both hit your bloodstream the same way. Brown sugar costs more, not for health benefits. It's logistics. Brown sugar clumps, because molasses absorbs moisture, needs special packaging. Shorter shelf life. White sugar stays free-flowing for years. So, which sugar should you use? Depends what you're making. White sugar is pure sweetness. Use when you want sugar to disappear. Drinks, light cakes, meringues. Brown sugar has molasses flavor. Caramel notes, moisture that makes cookies chewier. Use when you want that flavor. Chocolate chip cookies, barbecue sauce. Raw sugars are marketing more than substance. Less refined than white more refined than true cane juice. Large crystals look fancy on muffins, but in baking where everything melts, you're paying extra for aesthetics that disappear. And honestly, most recipes work with whatever sugar you have. Difference between white and brown in baking is minor. Substitute one for the other and most people won't notice. You probably need two types, white for general use, Brown when you want molasses flavor. Sugar beet versus sugar cane. Indistinguishable once processed. Chemical analysis can't tell them apart. Neither can your taste buds. So those different sugar bags in the baking aisle aren't mysterious varieties. They're the same plant juice stopped at different points along the same industrial process. White sugar went through all the washing steps. Brown sugar stopped earlier and kept some molasses coating. Raw sugar stopped even earlier. That's it. The price differences come from packaging and storage costs, not superior health benefits or quality. You're not buying natural versus processed. You're buying different degrees of the same processing. And maybe you'll stop overthinking the sugar aisle now because you're someone who understands that food marketing sells stories about refinement, but chemistry doesn't care about those stories. That's the process. We reveal how things actually work, one story at a time. If there's something you'd like us to explore next, let us know. Until then, trust the process.